What up my freaks, Rowena Sensei here with part 6 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Blood Dragons Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, the Ordos are rising. Middenheim has fallen in a new Ordo Profundum, uh, Lake Keep Outpost, whatever, has arisen there. And Castle Drakenhof is under siege by Aberash, soon to be taken, and a new Ordo Templarius has Blood Keep arisen there. We will be good and will just be gated by the number of blood kisses we have in order to raise our other lords and get them on the field as well. Plus, we gotta move to the other libraries as well, but uh, we do have another imminent witch hunter attack to take care of first. Anyway, let's see what we've got to do this turn. I think, other than Wallach, uh, oh wait, Wallach's recruiting, so I guess it's just Aberrush attacking Castle Drakenhof, isn't it? And Waldemar Ratep, our new uh, Depth Guard Lord, is on the field, though I'm not super happy with his uh, uh, acts of renown as available to him. Corruption of the New World is pretty much completely useless, and Black Knight Lichmaster is isn't great either. Mm. I mean, it's not that it's bad, it's just that we already have it on several heroes, and I'd like a different one. I may need to get a new different lord, but he'll hold the place for now. Anyway, I guess that's it then. Aberash, you're gonna head directly into combat. Let's level you up and let's get into it. As to what we level... What do we got here? I guess we can get him Arcane Conduit and Earthing and start moving through his fighty tree. It's not super necessary, to be perfectly frank, but we may as well do it. We could also start getting some points in his army... Mm, but it probably isn't super necessary either. Yeah, let's go for Impassioned. Interestingly enough, it seems that Aberash's tree is a hero tree rather than a lord tree. We can see that these are one, two, three points for each spot. But for lords, normally, those are two points rather than three. So I guess because Aberash... Yeah, see those two in all of them? Uh, because Aberash is can be a hero or a lord. I guess that's why they did it that way, but it does mean it's going to cost us twice as well, not twice, 1.5 times as many skill points to get the same amount of melee defense, for example. Usually uh, blade shield or whatever the uh, equivalent is. I think it's Blade Shield, uh, is two points for Tuel, but this is three points for Tuel. But oh well, once again, it's not like Aberesh cares really, or needs it. Uh, let's level up the Bloodkin, who apparently we haven't leveled for a while. Also, what do you do again? You have that Eldritch Aura, which I do like. Don't really care for the stronger binding for the Graveguard and Ward save. We can't waste our Blood Kisses right now anyway, so we're not going to change any of that. Uh, we can get you Heroic Killing Blow. Raise dead is maxed out. We can get you Arcane Conduit, Magical Reserves, and with two points to spare, I'm going to say two points in Van Hells. Generally speaking, we're having Ag Aberash cast his uh, healing spell most of the time, so yeah. Anyway, time to head to Castle Drakenhof, though before we start the battle once again, we did manage to reach the engagement threshold, so this episode will be an hour long, and the offer does still stand. 400 likes and 50 comments, and the next episode will be an hour long as well. All right. Let's uh, face off against the, uh, those Drakenhof Templar Knights, their last stand, as well as a Fargulf, and that'll be nice. Go. Alrighty, walls no longer matter to Aberash, so that at least is going to make for some easier duels with enemy lords, heroes, and elites. We also got our Grave Guard Depth Watcher, Depth Guard, nope, nope, uh, Depth Guard Deck Watchers, that's it, that's the one, I got it, uh, on the field as well, and ooh, they're halberds, uh, looking pretty good, I want to compare them to some 
other... Hmm, oh, oh, we don't have anything halberdier in this uh, particular uh, army. But anyway, anyway, Depth Guard will always uh, look damn great. They've always been one of the coolest looking units in the game. And we'll try them out and compare them with our other units as we head towards that gate to reclaim uh, some of this vampire, vampiric architecture. Aberash, in the meantime, will drop down on a poor enemy. A necromancer ain't no way a necromancer is going to be able to defend himself and he'll go down fairly quickly. He will cast by the looks of it a couple of times. Got a Van Hells down some Macabre and Invocation of Nehek on himself. Um, but has dropped down to about half HP. And that said, Aberish, at least at the current time, at least without any of the uh, new weapons that were bound to get him, uh, doesn't actually hit all that crazily hard. Certainly doesn't hit for 1k or anything like that, so it does still take him time to work through an enemy lord. And ow, that looked uh, that looked very painful. Did that necromancer just die while in the air? I think he died while in the air. Ouch. Well, it sucks to be him <laughs> for now. But we're still good. Our units are still working on that gate as well. It's going to take some time to break through it. And by the looks of it, the Dabarash can keep on casting and uh, fighting under this uh, firewall. I was hoping to, to bounce it off the wall there in this particular case. And it does look like the bounce did work, but it just stopped just short of hitting the enemy again. Uh, but oh well. Anyway, we have lift up. Aberash uh, goes up in the air again and then drops down. Again, I wanted to originally send him after the Vargulf, but then I realized the Vargulf is just so, so far away. You really should have been protecting your necromancer, buddy. <laughs> Um, perhaps its bestial senses allow it to uh, to realize that it doesn't want anything to do with Aberash. Anyway, uh, tried out another one of those casts. I forgot what that uh, spell is called for uh, for Aberash's lore. And what do we have it here? Distilled wrath. There we go. And still we haven't broken through the gate. This is just Aberash and just causing absolute havoc in the middle of the enemy settlement. And continuing to do so by the looks of it. Although the enemy gate is nearly done for now. I think we can send all these infantry units flying as well. And damn! <laughs> oh, that's pretty entertaining. Just see how far he can send infantry units flying. And another one of those firewalls, or blood and firewalls, is going to come down through another blob of enemies, or at least they'll have to pass through it to get to the gate as it finally comes down, and our units can finally stream into the city. Uh, we've also had our little uh, Bloodkin Aspirin flying overhead, but I wanted to have a rush to take care of units, and he's racked up a decent am amount of damage and kills between his spells and his sword work. And we get to summon those Phantoms of Blood Keep or First Keep, Phantoms of the First Keep, onto the field, and I'd like them to duel some of those Drakenhof Templars, see how that works out for them. I'm going to start off by charging into or ideally through some zombies, but it looks like we will indeed and get stopped and distracted by them. And the zombies are going to get reinforced by the Grave Garden. I do believe the enemy uh, Cav will move in as well, so at the very least we'll still be able to get uh, the fight. I'm really digging these blue, uh, the blue armor and barding these guys have as well. Well, the texture's going a little bit crazy there for a second, but that happens. Happens in vanilla all the time as well. And there we go, though. In this particular case, I think the uh, Drakenhof Templar Knights are being blocked by their own Graveguard and uh, zombies. And yeah, we got four units and being held off by these Phantoms, which is pretty good, I would say. Anyway, the Phantoms aren't the only thing on the field as we've moved some of those Deck Watchers on the field as well. They've ripped their way through some poor old Crypt Ghouls. And are continuing with the rest of our units to rip through some Grave Garden skeletons as well. I you know, like to make a comparison in terms of uh, infantry killing ability between the uh, uh, Greatsword wielding uh, Blood Dragon uh, Neophytes. 
and the regular Depth Guard with their dual axes, as regular Depth Guard are usually made to destroy chaff infantry really quickly between their fast attacks with their dual axes, uh, but they lack armor piercing, which the Great Swords do have, but the Great Swords are very, very killy, as we've seen so far in this campaign. Anyway, uh, how we doing over here? It looks like our Phantoms of the First Keep have lost about half of their HP uh, to the enemy Drakenhop Templar Knights. Uh, the fact that the enemy has magical damage on those is probably what's uh, uh, what's being quite the issue, but we did send in some of our anti-large units to help against the enemy knights as well. And get those halberds working for us. And man, the uh, the Knights of the First Keep is a really, really strong summon. I mean, they've been holding up all of these units uh, by themselves for a good, solid portion of this battle. And aren't having too much trouble, and we can keep them nice and healed up with occasional Invocated Dotes as well, and get a lot of mileage out of them. They're pretty darn killy as well. They have 91 kills and 11k damage to their name, which is far more than any of the other uh, of the other units. We got decent amounts of kills, but not nearly as much damage on uh, the Depth Guard in this situation as well. Anyway, still continuing to uh, rip our way through the zombie and skeleton blobs, but they are tarpitting our our main portion of infantry. But that's alright, we'll definitely win the attrition game. We're using some uh, blood and fire casting upon the enemy, probably hit our own units a little bit, but that's alright. Uh, Vargulf is still in here as well, but once again we got plenty of anti-large to contend with it. Alright, and it's Depth Guard, it's Ordo Profundum versus Ordo Templarius here, or Templarium. Templarum? Templarum? I think it's Templarum, whatever. <laughs> the Drake and Half Templars. Facing off against these guys, and the Vargulf helping them out as well, though by and large we're ignoring the Vargulf in favor of applying those anti-large halberds to the uh, uh, the enemy knights, and by the looks of it, the Drakenhof Templars are pretty much done, and will fade away. There's one left, and down he goes, and only the Black Knights will remain. Out here, still in a contest, though the enemy is down to the dregs, only zombies and uh, small elements of a uh, Skeletons remain, and the battle will soon be ours. It did take quite a while, though. That, uh, yeah. Perhaps our our blobs of units aren't as killy as we might like, though. Of course, this was a sort of a pseudo choke point here, but nonetheless, it did take a while to work through those enemies. But at least we got some good shots out of it. Anyway, how are we doing out here? That uh, Vargolf is still alive and so are the Black Knights. I think what might be happening is that uh, we're in a little bit of a desync with this particular replay due to the uh, uh, due to the siege battle. Yeah, there it is. Uh, the battle will end here, even though when I played it, it uh, went slightly differently as Abarash hunted down and killed the Vargolf, but... No, we can still hear the uh, sounds of battle outside, but yeah, a uh, slight desync, the Vargo survived, and by virtue of the Vargo surviving, it looks like the battle lasts a little bit longer, but anyway. All right, easy little fight that was mostly just screwing around with Abarash's spells, and I was a little bit interested to see how the uh, various uh, uh, the various Blood Knight uh, warrior units would perform. By the looks of it, the Blood Dragon neophytes massively outdamaged the other two, though these two were late into the battle, and the Depth Guard Deck Watchers in particular, uh, being anti-large, were sent to help out against the Vargulf and help out against the various enemy cav units, so it wasn't quite the idea deal comparison. Anyway, uh, with that, Castle Drakenhof falls, and uh, the new blood keep of the Ordo Templarius will be raised. They're really tempting to take that 8k, but, uh, mm, 
We would lose a level. Is 8k worth it? I don't know how... Uh, our growth is relatively low even with this, so it'll take a while to... Ah, just, 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 just construct it. Construct it at level 2. Dragons. At least this way we won't have to waste any of the growth. And yeah, with only 85 growth, it uh, does take time. Enemy killed in battle, sapper, and this, I believe, gives uh, us another goodness. army capacity, doesn't it? Well, that's just swell. And why are you flashing their Ordo Libraries? Oh, probably because we took an Ordo Library. Go figure. Very nice. Alrighty, now we have special buildings here. The Library of Castle Drakenhof, Lord Recruit Rank Plus 2, and the Von Karstein Court Hall. Huh. I think this is just a holdover from the, uh, uh, from the vampire counts, because this is, well, the control is useless to us, as we don't have control. A vampire corruption is relatively useless to us. And it says here recruit rank plus two from vampires. I guess that would probably work for our heroes, at least. So we might still build it. Even though 10k is a little bit steep right now, that doesn't mean it'll always be steep. Anyway, uh, Abarash, I would have loved for you to upgrade this, but alas, we still need two more metals, so we cannot do so right now. Ooh, we can now get the Disciples of the Path. Oh, lovely. We just need it to be in our own territory. Well, uh, let's get our first one of these and get more of them as we are able. Uh, you also leveled up, sir. Let's get you one more point in Impassion, trying to get towards Red Fury and then towards Immortal Will. Because if anybody needs more healing, clearly it's Aberash. Alright, and I uh, just might as well level you up while we're here. Invocation of the Hecken Van Hell's Dance Macabre. Maxing out most of your spells. Curse of yours is still nice, or decently usable, so we'll get that. And Aberash doesn't actually have Wind of Death, so yeah. Though, Rain of Fire and Blood does seem to be very, very useful nonetheless. Anyway, the rest of that looks good. There's nothing to recruit. There's a technology or research to pick. And what we're going to pick here is... Um, passive ability. We don't have enough of these guys to bother with it yet. Heartrend and Relish in Blood gives us 8 melee defense and 8 melee attack for all blood dragon units, which is swell. Campaign movement range out of this. Nomadic Dragons gives us campaign movement range plus 20% and additional range. So I think we might want to move through the uh, uh, through the Ordo Draconis tree first. There's some really good stuff in here. Lots of additional campaign movement range for everybody. And then buffs for all of our blood dragon units. And those are the most numerous at the time. Anyway. Anyway, anyway. That looks like an end turn to me, unless I'm mistaken. Just gotta double check that we can't actually build anything useful here. I guess we'll just want to go straight towards that library. I don't really want to babysit the place, but we can set another army up to do it. Ah, uh, in fact, no we can't. We have to send one of these armies over there to do it, don't we? Because there's nothing that can recruit over here. I mean, I guess we can transfer some of Aberash's stuff uh, over to another... Hmm. There's potential for that as well. Just transfer, like, all of this stuff. Maybe even this stuff as well. And just slowly build up Disciples of the of the Path. I guess it doesn't really matter until the Witch Hunter threat is over anyway, because we have to stay there until it is, so yeah. Anyway, building upgrades. Lord's not moved. Ca Which Lord's not moved? Wallach's not moved. He's recruiting. Oh, I guess Waldemar technically hasn't moved, but he's not going to recruit, or he's not going to do anything right now. Anyway, anyway, anyway it's on the turn. And the Deceivers. Gonna keep operating that peace treaty, eh? Gonna give us 3.7k now. You know what? Maybe it is indeed time to peace out with at least a few factions. And go for it. I'm actually curious to see what Vlad would offer us for a peace treaty. We could let him live, although he doesn't like us very much right now. Uh, could let him live and just take over all of these territories, or at least the ones that aren't too near to the Blood Keep. Maybe I shouldn't have uh, shouldn't have taken Templehof over, destroyed Templehof, and left him at least with that. Moussillon has been destroyed, so fare thee well to the Red Duke, and thus uh, the Red Duke's mission is aborted. But no big deal. Uh, a new blood dragon. Other has succumbed to vampirism. A new blood dragon lord is ready to be recruited. Zacharias Ratep. Uh, I take it that's one of the uh, uh, one of the mortals that we defeated. Uh, wait, a moment. Did he get onto the field? How are we at? Heck, we're at six out of six here. One, two, three, four, five. Where is this? 
Where is the sa- what the heck is this? What happened here? Huh. Well, that's odd. Is this have something to do with, uh... Ooh, Vanguard deployment for Blood Knight Vanguard units. Blood Knight Vanguard? Vanguard deployment for Blood Knight Vanguard. Is there a unit called Blood Knight Vanguard, or is there just Blood Knights that are... Okay, anyway. I guess there's nothing for you to do here, sir. You are going to be disbanded. And we can get you back on the field as needed, if needed. And you do have some good traits. Or a good trait, so there's a decent likelihood of that. There we go. Uh, we have Tempered Fury and we have Eternal Discipline here. I want to mill through these, but I don't want to spend the money right now. Uh, you, Aberash, yes. Get that Disciples of Aberash camp. Oh. Hmm. I was going to say, maybe we want to raise one of these Dwarfen structures. I don't know 100% whether we'll be able to get to back to Castle Drakenhof if we do, though. Do we risk it? Eh... I got a few turns into the Witch Hunter that I don't like how these Dwarven armies are positioned, though. If we sack you, move back here, we'll have 31% movement range remaining. It's risky. You know what, I'd rather build this up first, and then we can possibly do that after. The possibility exists, at least. Anyway, Awalak, you are now done recruiting as well. I guess you can't move until... Well, actually, that's not entirely true. Uh... Give this random little zombie... Oh, I was about to give the zombie, but you're just gonna get the plague, aren't you now? You stay here and keep giving us metal. Uh, let's move Wallach out. Let's have him channel for a turn. And let's move... Oh, he's suffering attrition due to chaos corruption. <laughs> the laughter. Uh... Alright, fine. I guess we're gonna move here instead. And just to raise Laura Lorne. Not so much that we need to, it's just, you know what, I should have checked how much you're willing to offer us in terms of money. 2.7k. Maybe we shouldn't kill them. It's a decent amount of cash. Eh, fine. Why not? We already uh, defeated their army, and frankly, it's kind of weak. Maybe by the time we come back, they'll have a decent stack here with some decent defenses, because this, uh, this is just not worth doing. And uh, we can give the Black Pit just for fun. Just gotta make sure that these guys don't attack us and take Middenheim immediately. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to build you up, and actually, speaking of, uh, go into Middenheim and start recruiting, sir. We have Graveguard available now that we'll have to be careful with how much we spend on them. They are quite expensive to recruit. A little bit cheaper if Wallach directly recruits them, but honestly, not that much cheaper. Well, let's start with some sword and board, boys. Like, so we we'll need to rack up a little bit more cash. Anyway, Zach, you are still waiting for that darn uh, Witch Hunter threat thing. It looks like two more turns unless we raise something. Ready. I so, oh wow, someone. Sylvania. <laughs> okay, well, just, just out of curiosity, how much money are you giving us? 9k? No, it's fine. Go for the, the non-aggression pact will actually complete a quest for us. We can always just delete it later, or if he doesn't hate us as much later. We can just keep him alive. I'll think about it. Uh, Skull Takers, how much do you offer? 3.5k. I don't even see their armies anymore. Yeah, fine. But we need to build stuff up. I'd rather get new units and stuff than bother with fighting these uh, pathetic little armies. And uh, this way we can send new armies out to do their stuff elsewhere. Uh, actually, the question is... Can Edmund, or actually, can Zacharias hold Nuln by himself if we build a Thrall Bastion or a Grave Site here? He probably could. And just so we can recruit stuff. You know what? Yeah, build a Grave Site. It's not super expensive. And if we get the metal, we'll build a Thrall Bastion. You are not recruiting right now. And you are not at war. I mean, yeah. My lungs. Just raid our own territory for metal for a little while. No real hurry with you. I'd rather just end a couple of turns and build stuff up while we wait for the uh, arrival of the new witch hunter threat for everybody. And I guess that's it. Yes, yes, and nobody else needs to raid. You're recruiting, unfortunately, so you can't raid. Alright, looks good. And the sand skill points, character, blah 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 blah, in turn. We do still need five more blood kisses to get Anarch von Karstein on the field. I want him sort of hanging around Castle Drakenhof. 
it'd get into a, a big old war with the dwarfs and orcs around it. It would be nice anyway. All right, which hunters attack imminent? Yes, indeed it is. And ooh, okay, we got that tech up and running. The other trickster shard and the brass cleaver for upgrading any settlement to tier five. Working on it. All right, let's get relish and blood. To get that, uh, yeah, melee defense plus eight is worth it. And then we'll try to go through this tree in order to get to nomadic dragons. I, though the blood kisses. Now we have to prioritize oh, them where they are, don't we? Still very tempted to sack this though. Ooh, you can reach tier 5, which means... Wait, are you actually able to build the, yeah, Dragon Scale generation thing? You are indeed. Passive ability, the first Master's Trial for all order. And Disciples of Aberash units. Damn. Well, that seems worth it. Minus the fact that it's ludicrously expensive. But we have been getting money. And thus it makes me feel like uh, maybe we could uh, do it. Uh, I hate to see Aberash not moving, though. Yeah, let's... Uh, I really hope I don't screw this up. Uh, let's let's just, just declare war on you. Do you have any allies? I didn't even check. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Alright, uh... Is this worth fighting? I mean... It's a giant, it's a fairly big pile of dwarfs, and we haven't fought them in a while. You know what, why not? I want to see the Disciples of the Path in action. Go. Honor or death. Alrighty, here we go. Looks like it's going to be a very aberrash centered episode as we get him more fights. And on top of that, we got our first of his disciples, the Disciples of the Path Warrior variant on the field. And I'm excited to see how these guys perform. They've got these uh, per same pretty awesome looking halberds uh, that the... Uh, uh, that the Blood Dragon Lords do. Huh, or that counts as a greatsword infantry. Interesting. Those look like pole arms to me, but anyway. Uh, anyway. I'm very excited to see how effective these guys are going to be, and they're going to be the tip of the spear and lead the charge. They are, however, going to be taking a few hits from arrow fire or coral fire. I'm just trying to follow on. Wait, can't I just a moment? Uh, you can't do the camera follow and replay, can you? I don't think you can, or maybe you can, but there's a button for it. But I never use it, so I uh, and don't recall what it is. You can do it when you uh, regularly look at a unit. Ah, well, whatever. They're nearly into combat as well. But yeah, shouldn't they be glaive infantry or polearm or halberd infantry? Well, not halberd, but uh, glaive infantry or polearm infantry or something. Those aren't great swords. I guess they could be great weapons, but uh, does it say great sword infantry? Does it say great sword infantry? I guess it doesn't really matter again. I'm yes, I'm still on this. Anyway, they move in and they get hit with an absolute ton of uh, of enemy blasting charges and corals at the same time, dropping them by about 30% of their HP. Though of course uh, that can be healed up, and they haven't lost a single model to that. We've also split away a decent portion of our army and are going to hit the uh, uh, the entrance to the city here at the same time as we hit the, let's say, main one here. Aberash is also off fighting. He's cornered the enemy lord. Well, cornered may not be quite the right word, but he is dueling the enemy lord, and I'm sure he'll have no problem there due to the uh, stat disparity in between the two. And especially as the Lord cannot call for aid, as we have summoned those uh, Knights of the uh, of the First Keep, or Phantoms of the First Keep, on the field again. And they're doing great work here, distracting plenty of units, and are not getting hit by magical damage, like they were in the uh, fight in Drakenhof. 
so that works out quite well for us. Anyway, getting hit with more of those blasting charges, we gotta put an end to that as soon as we can. We are gonna heal up our units to make sure that uh, uh, they stay, if not to top at least, in a decent shape. Looks like the Depth Guard Deck Watchers have joined their halberds to our glaives. And now it's just a matter of breaking through these piles of enemy doors. They do have a lot of armor piercing, however. Tons of miners, all of which are armor piercing and great weapons as well. So we are bound to take damage here as we work through this. And the corals rain down on us from several directions. At once, plus uh, hits from the uh, the enemy towers. A dangerous place to be, but I'm sure a place where a blood knight feels right at home. Uh, speaking of knights of various kinds, black knights are moving into the enemy settlement as well. We're not going to send them through our uh, line here. We're going to hit enemy units uh, that are annoying us, like those corollers and miners with blasting charges, to stop them doing their thing. Ooh, some of the uh, Disciples of the Path have uh, peeled away, together with some of the uh, Blood Dragon neophytes here. And are entering the fray against uh, the other minor units. No more throwing blasting charges, please, as those are a little bit cowardly. Not that they were effective enough against our units here. How are we doing? Looks like the enemy lord has been defeated by Aberash at this point, and I uh, prefer to watch the uh, Disciples of the Path uh, this time around, especially considering we've seen Aberash kill pretty much every lord uh, that he's faced so far. The Knights of the First Keep, or the Phantoms of the First Keep, continue to fight and are up to 164 dwarf kills and 160k damage. Or not 160k, 16k damage, but uh, still, very, very good work. Now these guys are absolutely pulling their weight here. Quite impressively so. And those uh, dwarf units surely wish they had some of the fancier weapons available to their kin so that the magical damage could uh, uh, hurt those ghosties. Anyway, we still have this choke point fight as well and looks like a good old-fashioned melee slash brawl. All the while, it does appear that uh, we are being targeted by an enemy grudge thrower at the same time, which has been doing decent damage to our bloodkin thralls. You gotta be careful about that, especially as we block up here. Alright, chase down whatever you need and then get out of the line of fire of that grudge thrower. Actually, fairly good positioning with the enemy blocking us in such a way where that uh, grudge thrower could fire down that uh, little thoroughfare there. Pretty good. And uh, balance of power is about 90% and the battle is nearly ours, but the dwarves are doing a definitely an admirable, jo admirable job of holding. Alright, and Disciples of the Path clearly doing well as well. I'd like to compare the uh, damage dealt so far. Let's see, we're at 93 kills and 8k damage, and they were the tip of the spear. The Blood Dragon Neophyte Warriors uh, did outkill them, though. 174 kills and 15k damage. Not as... Uh, hmm. Plenty more kills, but they probably killed off a lot more miners while the Disciples of the Path killed and Dwarf Warriors as well. And these guys, I think, just destroyed the uh, and just destroyed the barricade there, and so they're stuck after doing so. Aberash is fighting another blob of enemy dwarf warriors, and our phantoms of the first keep continue to fight up to 260 kills now and 23k damage. Although now we've got some reinforcements move in as those depth guard with cowbirds, the deck watchers, have joined the fray. Not that their anti-large is going to be too valuable here, but that's all right. And it looks like with that, the enemy has finally given up. Though they did hold, and they did do damage to several of our units, especially that darn grudge thrower. And good setup there. And very good indeed. Anyway, we're going to take a couple of seconds to heal up a couple of units, but otherwise, oh, we can do that off screen.
All right, very nice. We certainly took a bunch of damage on a bunch of our Bloodkin thralls there, but we were able to revive them after the battle. A lot of it came from the Grudge Throwers, and I probably should have sent Tabarash to destroy those a little bit earlier. Though on top of that, we clearly saw the uh, vulnerability of the uh, low uh, unit, low model uh, count, a uh, units uh, to enemy missile fire, as we took plenty of damage from the enemy quarrelers, and just as we were trying to get into combat so until we get those missile resistance buffs for everybody we'll have to be careful against enemy ranged focus armies in particular uh we will obviously sack this place i'd love to raise it but we have to return to drakenhof and return to drakenhof we can and then we'll have to do march stance in order to do it but at least this way it can't be uh, it can't be taken from us so you go right here Aberash. And then I guess we'll sack or raise Zifbar. I'm actually hoping that this army stays there. Would certainly be worthy of a fight. And I'd like to see Aberash take on some giant slayers as well. Ooh, another forbidden rod. Always a nice pickup. In addition, very nice indeed. And ow, oh, you can actually go into an encampment. Huh, watch this guy get ambushed now. Uh, anything worth building here? Hmm. Wait a moment. I mean... Oh, screwed. Let's get the dragon's lair. Uh, try to get that blood dragon headquarters up as fast as possible. Free dragon scale generation per turn sounds just swell. And I think, don't quote me on it, but I think I saw that something had a blood kiss generation building. I don't know what it was, though. Uh, is it this? No, this also generates blood scales. Not as many, but still generates blood scales. Or dragon scales, whatever. Uh, everything's blood. Uh, you generate blood scales. Blood kisses up for the love of... <laughs> Alrighty, so we gotta get the cauldron up here, but to do so we also need to get you up to tier 5, so that's gonna take a little bit of time since we like the precious metals and stuff to do so. Anyway, uh, which hunter is becoming either next, probably next turn. They can't attack immediately, so I'm tempted to just sack the black pit or raise the black pit. I wonder how much damage we take. Kemler is also nearby. Is there any reason to kill him off, though? I mean, I'd like to get his defeat trait on, or whatever it is, on Aberash, but for now it's probably not super necessary. I just want uh, Wallach to do this. Hmm, get a little bit of free XP, though I do have to wonder how hurt he'll get. Who are you at war with, incidentally? Oh, you're at war with Kemler. Kemler, how much will you pay us? Say what you must, but no, you play. 3.2, a thousand gold. Not much money, admittedly. But they are in the way. I guess in some ways everybody's in the way. Uh, at least until we can sail on out. At least we are close to this riptide and can go to a new place afterwards. Uh, let's go here. Is this worth fighting? I honestly don't think it is. And we can find bigger battles than this. And we are going to raise it, not sack it. You're going to move. Stop moving now. Good. And you cannot go into hidden encampment to last, so nice we'll have to fight the next army's damage. But maybe, you know what, that might make it a little bit more interesting. You're actually a little bit further than I'd like, so you're probably going to have to come in as a reinforcement of Waldemar, who also cannot recruit unless he goes here. Oh, actually he can't recruit at all, but he can raid, and thus get us more metal. Alright, yeah, I guess we gotta get... We basically gotta do that with lords everywhere. In fact... I guess we'll summon at least a temporary lord right here, right now, just to raid stuff, raid to our, raid our own territory. One of the free lords. Let's von deal. Recruit. And you can't go into raiding for now, but you can sit outside here and maybe pop a uh, uh, force and ambush by Aberash of this little stack. Ooh, and then we could possibly use you to raise Zufbar. No, we can't because you don't have siege attacker. Oh, actually we don't want to do this, do we? Damn. This guy's going to stop us from upgrading our tier 5, won't I? Decent likelihood that he will, but I guess we'll have to do it next turn. All right, screw it, whatever. Whatever, all good, Edmund and Waldemar. The rest of you are all good for this turn while we wait. Do we need to recruit anything? We can recruit trash units. And keep waiting to get Graveguard. Don't really spend. Don't really want to spend too much money on it. You know, what? I think we're fine. And assign skill points. Blah blah blah. In the turn. I really want to set sail. So.
Will anybody attack us this time around? Moment of truth. Uh, Zifbar will indeed attack us. Well, we basically just fought this. I think... I think there's no need to fight it again. I'll resolve it. And... I guess the ambush thing failed. Take the money as well. At least we're in our own territory, so even with the uh, failure of the uh, Ocean of Speed, Ambush Fool, yeah, even with the failure of that... Ooh, hello. Win the following battle, the Lost Brother. I'll take a look at that in a second. Reinforcements expected. We got some Hellblaster Volley Guns, a bunch of range units. This looks like fun. Warrior Ascendant Gear... Oh, there's also... Huh? Rewards of Dread... Oh, there's a, uh, there's a new one of these as well. But this is a specific quest of some kind. Bl Warrior Ascendant Gear Blood Scaled Shosses Reforged Spawn Legendary Hero and Mikhail Harkin. Lord Harkin, our spies in the Imperial Court have relayed information we believe you will find useful. And they claim that the Order of the Knights Griffin have been a keeping a vampire in their custody. The vampire is said to be a blood dragon, captured the time of the destruction of the old keep. Upon the receipt of this news, I dispatch this missive to you immediately and have attached the supposed location of your incarcerated brother. I wish you luck in the coming battles, Vlad von Carson. Oh, Vlad is being helpful. Well, now I feel bad about destroying all his stuff. <laughs> Obliterate the threat. Yes, indeed we will. Uh... <laughs> uh... I bet we can't give him territories back, but well, what can you do? Uh, Not these little armies aren't worth fighting, so we can hopefully auto-resolve them. Do we want to upgrade anybody? Oh, we can't actually upgrade anybody, or at least we don't really want to upgrade anybody. What we do want is this. Auto-resolve. Does killing every sing- ooh, healing. Take the healing. Does killing uh, Sword of Might, Obsidian Trinket, Assault Expert, the Disciples of Aberash, yeah, so the destruction of each one gives us a unit of these, meaning... First of the blood dragons. Two to you. Nah, just take all three. And then do that. And then reinforce. Bring darkness. And Aberash Bring kill. Oh, really, it's going to blood... Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> fine. Fine game. Let's uh, a rapid pace through that. We're going to fight a quest battle uh, this episode. Probably the uh, legendary hero, hero Mikhail Harkin, and quest battle just because of the... Judging by the previous quest battles, the... Uh, uh, the battle will hopefully be fairly difficult. We should try to essentially... Hmm... Maybe try to do a worthy foe or a quest battle every single episode, like one per episode, so we have one guaranteed a big old fight. I'm still so salty about Kazrak, though, because we could Vanguard deploy our entire army here. And for these little speedy battles, uh, this would be just such a great boon. But anyway, all right. Uh, I'll let you guys... Oh, wow, you're damaged. Okay, fine. Do... Yeah, I don't know why they set themselves up like that, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Like so, and like so, and just group two, group one, three, four, five, kind of forgot about you to be perfectly honest, but I guess it doesn't matter, Aberash, go kill the enemy lord, everybody else go, and did I forget anything, black knights, move in, hit the enemy in the back, we don't need to actually destroy their army, we just need to force them to rout, uh, wait, stop, let's do, I don't know, one of these, ah, they're gonna start moving, okay, fine. If they're going to start moving, we'll go for the enemy lord and kill off the enemy range with your summon. They performed incredibly well in the previous battle, so I expect the same sort of performance here. Charge into those halberds as you like. Uh, you know what, let's hit them with a spell before the... Uh, uh, before our own army arrives and starts hurting themselves, let's also pop off a enrage battle cry. Just get the enemy out of the way, and Black Knights, you're moving in here, and you guys have moved around, get ready to go. Alright, Aberash, wanna drop a spell or two? Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Alrighty, and... Spells be dropping. Oh, there we go. How's that enemy lord looking? Well, he's got some units uh, helping him out, but uh, probably won't matter all that much soon. Okay, the men-at-arms and pole-arms, let's not have the Black Knights attack them, because they're just going to get themselves damaged. Uh, we don't need to do anything else, I think. And the battle should be ours in a few seconds. All right, a rip of those enemies apart.
All right, uh, those guys be running, and you are not running. You're about to get mobbed by a huge blob of vampires, and uh, it's gonna get ugly. I have a little leaping attacks the uh, Depth Guard-like units do, or the uh, Adept Rawls do when they move in. Anyway, who's still fighting? That's what I get for watching for a few oh, seconds. All right, anybody get damaged? I don't think anybody did, regardless of the lack of paying attention. I'll just cast a healing spell for a couple seconds just to make sure. Make use of the passive. All right, good enough for me. All right, hopefully it's every time we defeat one of these we get a uh, Disciple of the Path unit. I guess we'll want... Hmm. Wondering whether we should fill out this army with Disciples of the Path, or whether we should have some units from every single Ordo present as well. Sort of as if they're uh, they're training to become Disciples of the Path. I mean, I guess they're just Nabarash's followers, but nonetheless. Uh, we're gonna enthrall captives here. And we're gonna hit Oakenhammer. First of the Blood Dragons. And, oh! The army doesn't get destroyed. Ooh, we did get a Talisman of Preservation, though, but damn. Uh, that's unfortunate. And it doesn't count because the army didn't get destroyed. Oh, game, how dare you. How dare you. All right, I guess hopefully it'll allow us to auto-resolve it now. Though I fear that we now won't have enough movement range to destroy Oakenhammer. Auto-resolve and heal up not much, but it's, uh, well, healing. Getting some items at least. And yes, okay, now that army counts is destroyed, and we cannot reach this with either of you. Alright, that's fine. That's fine. Now, Rush, head into camp. Right here. <laughs> uh, and we actually want to move you back to Castle Drakenhof. The reason for this being. If these guys try to attack you, it'll screw up Abarash's uh, building of his Dragon's Lair here. And we don't want to do that. Let's get another Disciple of the Path. And how many levels do we need to upgrade you guys in tonight's nine? All right, so quite a bit. Quite a bit. It's going to take a while. But hey, at least we're getting these guys on the field. Is this the only way to get these guys, incidentally? Instantly recruit unit, unique Disciples of Aberash units to your army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, is it only through killing the Witch Hunter units? For every Witch Hunter army killed with Aberash's force. So it seems to be so, yes. All right. Well, fair enough. Uh, let's keep going. Wallach. Can you even get to this army from here? I fear you cannot. Okay, uh, you're going to have to move towards Middenheim where you'll suffer attrition. Oh, that ain't great. That ain't great at all. I guess I'll have to heal up next turn. No, uh, nothing we can do about it. Actually, there is something we can do about it, sort of. Uh, what we can Darkness do is this. We can transfer all of the badly hurt units into this little army. And allow this army to stay in... Yeah, let's do that. I guess we can take you guys as well. And... Let the Graveguard suffer attrition. There we go. <laughs> A uh, bit of an odd thing to do, but uh, hey, it works. It works. Keeps us nice and healthy, and insofar as vampires are healthy. Well, they're super healthy. Uh, and also doesn't waste us a turn. Balthazar gets still ran. Still want Abarash to kill him, though. And I guess we're going to actually fight these two, though. Black Knight Piles, you should do well. You have done well before, and you will do well. And again, Warriors of the Path maxed out. Let's get down. Ah, fine, let's get your smoke and mirrors. Screw it. Uh, we do still want to get the Penumbral Pendulum and Master of Beguilement and whatnot, so why not? Why not? And then you two, continue working together, good sirs. And continue just sitting here and raiding things until we have all the metal we could possibly want. We're at 15 now, which ain't too bad, actually. Uh... How much did that thing cost, Aberash's tier 5 Still building, in terms right. of metal? Well, 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 if it isn't 15. And then that's the Dragon Scale generation. It does cost 20k, and we're just about there as well. Beautiful. And yes, I know that we have Martial Valor. The only reason I'm not spending it is because of the... Uh, we can spend it, but then we wouldn't be able to make good use of the uh, Dark Magic. I do, however, I want to take a quick look here. We can upgrade Lord Recruit Rank by getting a few of these upgrades if we wanted. 
And there's certainly potential for that, as I did want to mill through slash replace the Depth Guard Lord with a better one. And at a higher level as well. Probably a good idea, but anyway. I'm getting distracted. And let's hit this army. Oh, the garrison comes along? This isn't worth fighting, is it? No. <laughs> Alright, I'd rather save the time for a big old quest fight. Uh, don't need to do healing, just do the dark magic. And... Great and worthy foe, great for you, but this army still remains alive and we can't reach it until next turn. Oh. Is it going to besiege this and prevent these guys from healing? It might. I'd say it's likely to do so, but even if it does, I guess it's okay, just because it means that we can still, uh, uh, we can still not suffer the attrition, so it's still, it's still better than suffering the attrition. Not that that's a high bar. Uh, Alright, you stay around Nuln, and you raid around Nuln as well. Probably could, hmm. Is the metal worth more than recruiting some of these guys right now? Because we want to leave Zacharias here effectively alone. All right, fine. You can recruit. Uh, you can recruit some spears. Okay, wait. One turn. It's gonna take a while, but uh, with all the defenses at Nulm, you should be able to hold without needing anything. And I do want to send Edmund elsewhere to do things, actual things. All right, we're good to go, I believe. I want Abarash to heal up, though it's not actually nearly as necessary as it was before. We do want to end this. Uh, unassigned skill points, character initiative available. Building upgrade available, blah, 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 enter. A raiding at Nuln. Oh, we're still at war with Scrag. Right, right, right. He wasn't willing to offer us enough cash to prevent it. Ah, good. Vlad has retaken Castle Templehof. I mean, Vlad's a good guy, and he and Aberash know each other, so... Well, reasonably good, yeah. Uh, so, okay, these guys want peace now. I'd rather raise these territories for the metal. Although, now that we're raiding all over the place with our basic armies, maybe it's not nearly as necessary. We still do have to walk past these guys to get to here, though, so for now, I think not. And on top of that, we can use their territories to give them to Vlad, so there's still use for it. Summon receives Plague, Middenheim, Middenheim besieged. I had a feeling, game. But oh well. Wallach, Drake, and will this destroy any of our units? It will not. Hopefully this didn't give you a plague, though. Alright, enemy killed in battle, those guys destroyed, we got the money, and we got the martial valor up to 9.1k, beautiful. And melee defense out of these fencer's blades, or melee attack and defense. Swap the units now. And we're good to go. Well, minus the fact that we're heavily damaged, but Wallach heals very, very nicely. He's got a bunch of buffs to it. Uh, now, we are... Are we good here? Well, good is a strong word. Uh, let's do this. You can get two Bloodkin, you can get two Graveguard. You sort of still need to... Ooh, yes, upgrade you. Upgrade Middenheim immediately. I mean, once it's a tier 3, it should be relatively defensible. Wallach, move this way. But stay close enough so that we can keep recruiting on Waldemar. Waldemar can do a little bit of a semi-follow. And recruit while following Wallach, while Wallach heads to the Abyssal Riptide. And then clams a new place. I was originally going to send him to Castle Carcass Sun, but frankly we can maybe send one of these guys to it. Or... Aberash is going to have to defeat Durthu and Orion anyway, and Belagar and Ikit and all the Bretonians, so we can send him out this way as well. And then what, loop back around to Lamy or something? Hey, yeah, maybe. Could take a sort of path like this. Man, he's gonna have a, a hard time just getting to every lore that needs to be defeated. But nonetheless, uh, anyway, let us move you right... Okay, just go into regular stance. Go right here. Here, just need to be close enough to this. You are going to move here and raise it. First of the blood dragons. And out of resolve, hopefully not too heavy damage. It doesn't look like it raise. And then back off. Okay, stop. March stance. And to Castle Drakenhof. Aberash, go to Zifbar and do the same thing there. There we go. We're racking up that metal now. 
And that'll hurt us, but that's okay. Raise the place as well. Well, we could sack it, but it's not that worth it. And stop moving now. Alright, perfect. Alright, this is, this is working. Then we can build this thing. Alright. We're getting close now, guys. What, close to what? Close to snowballing. Oh, we still have to send you here, don't we? Do we have to send Aberash to the Worthy Foe thing directly, or no? Hmm, I think we'll find out. I mean, it's only one turn. He can go to Karakadrin. Maybe Ungram is there instead of at Grand Peak, and then take this route up here instead. You just have to make sure that Lutz doesn't get himself killed. Uh, I would like to build the grave site, but we are only three turns away from the Templar Citadel. Hmm. Too bad you can't raid, but oh well. Uh, Zacharias. And Edmund. Oh, there's a caravan. I was going to send Edmund closer to Wallach and maybe even over here. We could swap some units around between these two guys. The thing is, Ed Zach or not Zach Rice, Edmund is going to be our Graveguard commander. What he wants is this hero. Because it has the Graveguard and the Black Knight buffs, meaning he has to move up northward. But with Balthazar Guild here. Ah, there's no way he takes this. There's just no way. All right, fine. Edmund, I think you're free to move. Uh, you know what? You're going to move in raiding stance. I don't know whether you can catch Wallach. Maybe. Might have to switch to march stance at some point. But for now, just go. Just go. All right, then you can stick around. Build some more spears while you're at it. Once again, there, there's no way that they take it now, and at any point when we're wanting to spend the metal, we can build a Thrall Bastion. Uh, we also want to keep an eye on you. We do have the money for you, but I think we'll wait on you. Alright, looks good to me. Also, Eberesh, you're building this right now, eh? Are you damaged? I think next turn, okay, we're going to do the Mikhail quest next turn, or in a bit. Uh... Everlasting Blood. You know what? We do have decent amounts of vigor. Let's get the additional campaign movement range. We're about to travel all over the place, so we're going to need every little bit. And we can get. And the turn now. And, well, 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 a big old ogre stack. And in March stance, no less, because it can't see Aberash's uh, uh, hidden encampment. And shame for you, Malkrad the Bulk. I wonder if your army is worth fighting. I guess if we don't fight, we'll be damaged again. We won't be able to uh, get for that quest. But it really is quite weak. But the ogres are quite fun to fight. And we do have more ogre... Or not ogre. We do have more of the uh, disciples on the field now. Kind of want to get them into it. Anyway, uh, get wild Dud, get rid of fury. And then start going through fervor. Get you hitting a little bit harder. And I guess we're going for this. You can leech XP if you can get onto the field before the enemy actually uh, is gone. I guess we could level you up as well, but it frankly probably doesn't matter for this. Let's fight this real quick, and then let's head into that quest battle, I guess, next turn. Go. Alrighty, here we go. I did say it would be an Aberrage day, and it's looking like it's going to continue and being such. Once again, I love the uh, lighting, and it does look like Aberrage is... Oh, right, the Power of Darkness is... Uh, I was about to say he's taking damage, but it's just the Power of Darkness affecting his barrier. Anyway, he's going to float towards the enemy lord, but we will also summon a unit of phantom... Uh, that unit of phantoms of the first keep to get into the fray long before the rest of our army does. Alrighty, looking pretty good on the charge there and right into those gorgers and ogre bulls. Probably a fairly decent matchup for us. By the way, I'm curious to see how they will handle ogre bulls and ogre units in general as compared to the piles of infantry that they've been dealing with so far, especially as I imagine that due to their low model count at 16, they probably likely have area attacks. Anyway, Aberesh has moved in to duel the enemy tyrant here. 
And unlike Scrag, this guy ain't healing himself, so he's having a pretty bad day. His army may be cheering around him, but he's down to 30% of his HP, and Aberash is completely fine, and even hurting himself uh, with those Power of Darkness activations, uh, with no care uh, whatsoever. Anyway, the enemy tyrant will be dropping shortly, I'm sure, but the rest of the battle is uh, being joined. Uh, we're uh, glaive-wielding disciples of the path, quote-unquote, uh, great swords. Facing off against some Ogre Bulls with dual weapons, though it looks like the Ogre Bulls are just going to get ripped apart in seconds. That one is hardly surprising. They are still a basic unit, after all. Got some Gorgers here, which are very good, though. And gotta love Gorgers, all of the... Uh, with all of the stuff available to them. Unbreakable, Frenzy, Immune to Psychology, Stock, and Vanguard deployment as well. I didn't even realize they had the... I didn't even realize they had Wallbreaker on them as well. Man, Gorgers get all the traits, don't they? Interesting. Alright, well, uh, all those traits are probably not going to save them from the uh, fight against the... Uh, uh, against the great weapon-wielding Blood Dragon Neophyte. So the texture is being a little crazy, though. There we go. Huh. For some reason, the, uh, yeah. Don't know what's up with the textures. But it happens. Alright, let them continue fighting for as long as they can. They're down to half HP, and I don't imagine they're going to... Uh, they're going to be favored in a contest against the Blood Dragon Neophytes here. Over on the flanks is a big blob of Black Knights that have joined those uh, Knights of the First Keep, and I do believe the enemy lord has fallen at this point. In fact, the entire enemy army is routing at this point, and it's just a matter of bringing down the last of those unbreakable gorgers. There we go. Down you go, and with that, the battle is a well and truly ours. A little bit easier, but, uh, well, now let's do a hard one now. Hmm, enthrall captives or well we are in our own territory. We can release the captives for more money, because we do need more money to Those build uh, lots more stuff. Enemy killed in battle, more garbage items that will turn into less garbage items, hopefully. Uh hmm. Who will actually fight the lost brother? That's a question. Uh, Wallach, you are currently in camp stance and Abrash is in no stance. If we change Abrash to a stance, teleport disappears. All right, so it's the faction leader that fights it. Fantastic. Uh, meaning we are free to do it whenever we please. In fact, you know what? We're not so hurt. I think we can do it right now. Well, let's do it right now. Uh, let's level you up and then let's do it right now, I guess. Uh, you can get the training upgrade because you can keep training the units in this army. How's our blood kisses? Ah, they're at eight. Frickin' fantastic. Martial Valor. No. Ordos. Orders. Ordos. Uh, Ordo Templarius Awaken. Well, that was anticlimactic. Uh... Anarch von Karstein, you are currently fielding the maximum number of lords. Oh, let's... Oh, my dear, let's... You're gonna have to go... Oh, actually... I was gonna... Ah, I was gonna replace Waldemar anyway, but uh, I think we have to replace Lutz for now. I guess he was free. Yeah, fine. Sorry, Lutz. And all those skeletons are gonna go to waste. Alas, I guess we could trade one to Aberash. Ah, you know what? Screw it. I don't think we're gonna rebuild them. Take those out, you can... Oh, you have... Oh, that's a Drakenhof Nightmare. Yeah, 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 it's not the Skeleton Griffin. Skeletal Griffin. All right, you're out. Do you have any ancillaries? You do not. You do not. Out and... In. All right, Anarch von Karstein is on the field. As I recall, Anarch was a really big boy uh, in uh, the lore and leader of the uh, and grand or grandmaster or whatever of the Ordo Templaris. Uh, we've got 
immune to attrition from lack of corruption, Vanguard deployment for all Ordo Templarius units. Okay, so you're going to be the uh, pretty much all Ordo Templarius stuff on, yeah? And what do we have in terms of your unique abilities? Oh, damn it. I screwed up a little bit. <laughs> oh, damn. What I, I got so excited by that, I forgot that I was going to spend some Valor to recruit him at a higher level. Which is a shame. Could have recruited him at, like, level 10. Oh, well, he'll have to work for his level, which, uh, well... Maybe more appropriate. Psychic Drain, an area of effect that reduces melee attack and defense and does damage. And he similarly has Honor or Death. He does have Curse of Undeath and Smoke and Mirrors. That's much nicer. And he has Pit of Shades, which is always nice. So plenty of magics to choose from. Storm of Night as a Von Karstein and Master of Beguilement all seem normal. All right. Russell's dead for you, and then we're going for the hunger. We're also going to need to get you a champion. Can we at least raise you a vampire thrall? No, we don't have enough space. And I guess we don't have enough blood kisses to transfer to make them... Uh, uh, to make them more useful. Anyway, you are going to need to immediately build the War Armory. I wish it didn't cost the 5 Horde Growth, but cost 5 sentence. Horde Growth it does. I also want to get the Thrall Tent for Aberash, but oh well. Oh! A moment. Hmm. Aberash can build Bloodkin now. He can build them for you. I'm not entirely sure why you can't recruit. Is it because Aberash isn't encamped? Honor comes before all. Why? Military chain buildings are required for recruitment. Did I not actually upgrade it? No, it's right there. You can't use uh, Aberash's horde recruitment. He can only Still recruit from his from himself. Oh, it's probably because of this. It's just, we can use it. We just can't see it. Okay, okay. We'll uh, we'll get them upgraded in a second, or in a bit, I should say. But for now, let's do a little fight. Once I finish up with this. The whole thing got interrupted because I got excited about having eight blood kisses. Uh, we are going to go for the Lost Brother. What are we facing off against here? Ooh. A big ol' army. All right. And we've read the little missive from Vlad already. And this will give us our first uh, gear teleport. What are we working here with? With here. Uh, decisive appe uh, de a peat. A uh, defeat, apparently. <laughs> I, I combined apparently with defeat, but we'll see about that. The great swords, and this army itself is not anything, uh, not anything scary, but it's most likely the reinforcements uh, that are going to, uh, uh, that are going to be concerning. We have more phantoms of the first keep of the warriors and knights variety here as well. Oh, lovely. Go. Long have I been a prisoner of the Sigmarite Templars, but today I sense a change. Though they have tortured me for nigh over a decade, yet even after their horrific treatment, I have never broken. But wait, I hear a roar. A roar that shakes the walls, the ground, and the sky. A roar that fills my very soul with hope and sorrow. A roar that I know well. The Ordo Draconis has finally come, bringing with it all of its terrible and righteous fury. Though my brothers lay broken, twisted, and dead, I shall lead the phantoms that now surround me, and together we shall answer its furious call. All right, here we go. Sorry if the editing looked a little bit wonky for this one. This was an unvoiced battle, and uh, uh, I hadn't realized it, so I had to afterwards go back so I could read over the uh, read over the beginning of it as well. So, uh, hence the cuts. But anyway, here we go, and this is not a battle that we're going to take lightly. Hellblasters are very, uh, very scary weapons, and those darn Inquisition kill squads are scary as well. They actually outrange the Hellblaster volley guns. Their missile strength is pretty much all armor piercing. They have stock as well, and they can definitely snipe our units with ease if we let them. So we gotta focus them and the Hellblaster volley guns down before they can do anything. Away we go, Aberesh will of course lead the charge as he's the least threatened by anything that the enemy can uh, throw at him 
And we'll once again summon those uh, knights or phantoms of the first keep. As soon as they're all on the field, they're going to get into lance formation. They're going to head directly into the enemy back line and smash those darn hellblasters. With that, Aberash will drop down and start working on the three, I believe, witch hunters that the enemy has brought onto the field. Two regular witch hunters and a witch hunter general, unless I'm mistaken. It's going to take a while to work through all of them, especially with great swords moving to help, but at the very least, the enemy is engaged. Looks like we're going to take a volley from an enemy hand gunner unit losing about a I don't know, quarter to a third of the HP on the Bloodkin, though they were a little bit damaged prior to the battle beginning. And we continue just to distracting the enemy. We've dropped one set of zombies down upon an Inquisition kill squad and are going to drop a second set of zombies on the second kill squad. Once again, these guys have insane rage and are basically artillery crews or Gisales, and uh, uh, we really don't want them firing. A wind of death comes in. Usually we use these a lot more when we uh, play the vampire cats, but not hasn't been really as necessary as uh, the uh, blood dragons but it does a little bit of damage we're going to follow it up with another uh, spell a wall of fire from Aberash himself for now the enemy army is still being distracted that uh, raised dead coming in very handy as it continues to prevent the enemy from leveraging their range superiority and allowing the rest of our army to finally close our now three units of disciples of the path will once again lead the charge and they'll be facing off against some of those uh, knights, uh, griffin chapter knights. All right, who have pretty solid stats as well. 56-65 on their melee attack and defense, but will it be enough to deal uh, with the uh, Disciples of the Path? Uh, it remains to be seen. Though they do have a witch hunter leading them. Aberash can't be killing all the witch hunters at once. And there we go, looks like it's going to be a pretty nice contest with the uh, with Aberash's Disciples versus Greatswords here. Can't wait to see these guys face off against other elite units, whether they be Chosen or Infernal Guard or, uh, I don't know, Black Guard of Nagron. We'll actually probably see them face off against Black Guard of Nagron relatively soon. And Black Orcs, as we have both of those available in the uh, uh, in the quest battle. Aberash comes back, he's killed one of the enemy units. Or one of the enemy witch hunters and is now going for this one. Very nice, knock him down and prevent the enemy army from uh, leveraging their heroes in the middle of the uh, lines. Looks like the rest of our units are arriving. We did send both of our Black Knight, uh, or both our Black Knights and Bloodkin Thralls up this way. As they're going to flank the army. The reason for this being I figured that they were both too fragile to take shots from Hellblasters or from uh, the Inquisition kill squads. But since we managed to distract them with our raised dead upon them... Neither of those two units were able to get too much, um, or the AI wasn't able to get too much mileage out of either of those two units. That said, it looks like we've got reinforcements on the field, including two Luminarchs of Kish and more Inquisition kill squads and more Witch Hunters. Go figure on that one. We're really going to have to move into the fray and prevent those guys from uh, damaging us as well, so gotta kill our way through the remnants of the enemy forces here, quick as we can and continue onward all right run them all down though it looks like the uh, knight's griffin at least will hold for a decent amount of time but the ai does have a tendency to cycle charge these guys so they might move away and allow the rest of their infantry to be crushed without them helping plus they are now surrounded both by the depth guard with halberds and the um, disciples of the path with their glaives all right, there we go, there we go. Aberash has also moved away from the enemy army and is going to go directly not for the enemy lord, but for one of these Luminarchs, while the Black Knights head on in to distract the Luminarch and the uh, uh, the other Inquisition kill squad as well. Just got to prevent all these guys from firing. It doesn't really matter how much damage the Black Knights are or aren't able to deal here, as long as the enemies aren't able to do anything. Our vampiric units will move in and dish out the damage. 
All right, and it looks like this is going reasonably well. This Luminarch is distracted. Aberrush is uh, smashing uh, the other uh, Luminarch. Which is down to about half HP and will be destroyed shortly. We're still getting mileage out of those uh, summons as well. The Phantom's keeping a unit of great swords at bay. And they've got 97 kills and 15k damage again. Yeah, once again, every battle these guys are summoned in, and they do uh, very well in. And I saw that we could build uh, warriors of this type of uh, the Regiment of Renown uh, sort of menu. Wonder if we can build the uh, Phantom Knights as well, or can they only be summoned? I guess we'll find out as we go. Still plenty more to discover about this mod. Anyway, the first of the enemy armies has collapsed. It looks like our friend uh, over here, our ally, has also done some work. And now, ah, he's got some own fan. He's got some of his own Phantoms of the First Keep and uh, Warriors of the First Keep as well. I'm just gonna take a quick look at these guys because we gotta. Alright, well, looking pretty fan to me, as they tend to do. And I thought that I saw that they had a, a lord here as well. Indeed, they do. Alright. Well, that worked out for us. Uh, it's not, however, working out for those witch hunters. While well, they have been able to damage several units while they were on the approach with the relatively limited amount of uh, time that they had to dish out damage, we are now starting to overrun their lines. And the Black Knights will no longer have to be the ones to uh, be forced to deal the damage since, uh, well, they're losing units aplenty here, just holding the enemy Luminarch and Inquisition kill squad in place. But it's worth sacrificing any amount of Black Knights to do that. And here come the vamps, leaping on in. The Bloodkin will lead the charge, followed by the uh, uh, followed by the uh, units of Disciples of the Path. And damn. Heck, this guy, this guy's got a, uh, this guy's got everything. He's got horns, he's got lots of those, uh, horn things on the back. I don't even know what to call them. All the armor. Hopefully we get our lord that, um, that's got all the armor like this as well. Rather than the open faceplate. And plus all the horns, completely necessary. Anyway, anyway, with that, it looks like the battle is pretty much ours. The last Luminarch and the last Witch Hunter are uh, just about and done for here, or at the very least will rout now that the rest of our vampire units have arrived. Some are still moving in, but it's just a matter of seeing the enemy shatter and the battle hours. Lovely. Oh, uh, lovely. That one did certainly take some effort. Hopefully we were able to recover a uh, decent amount and continue on, but, uh, well, let's find out for sure. I'm loving these quest battles. Ooh, all right, that was definitely a toughie. Once again, great to see these uh, difficult quests in this particular uh, game, or in this particular mod. It definitely warrants it, considering how powerful the faction is on the or in the overworld, or uh, through the uh, uh, metagame, or whatever you want to call it, on the map, I guess, is the, is the way to say. But uh, yeah, damn, those Inquisition kill teams. Those are freaking scary. Uh, the or whether it was one of the Inquisition kill teams or whether it was one of the Hellblasters, one of our Disciples of the Path Warriors units uh, in that battle dropped to about half HP with like a couple of volleys, just so so quickly. Obviously, we did manage to heal them up over the course of the battle, um, but uh, yeah, you gotta engage these things. You gotta engage those Luminarchs as well before they can dish out any kind of damage. But uh, well, um, we did manage to pull it off once again. The summons from Aberesh also did plenty of work and he himself as always uh, does a great job uh, we are going to I mean, we are in our own territories so we really don't need to heal take the money keep taking the money we're building a bunch of expensive things another mortal informer great and a hey, there we go the lost brother now having done this library quest completed monument of its atoll you have restored this library and accomplished the mission discovery what what, what? Uh, 
The guardians of the library and any prizes they carry are now yours to command. That was a library quest? And why did it talk about the library of its at all? I don't know, that was some 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 weird happened there. I'm not entirely sure. But Mikhail Harkin is on the field now. Uh very, very dead looking, but pretty awesome looking. Son of the first keep gives him the passive ability true banner of blood keep, though this is vague as to what exactly it means here. He has a redirecting aura. Hmm. Affects units in range. Eh? Affects units if missile unit. Interesting. He also has L7, just checking out what uh, and what passives he has. I don't see this true banner of blood keep thing. It's a battle effect, though, so uh, perhaps we'll find out what that means later. Uh, he has stronger binding for Graveguard, 8 melee attack and 10 melee infantry. Oh, so he has double buffs for Graveguard and buffs for Blood Dragon Neophytes. Interestingly enough, we may want to not put him in Wallach's army, but put him in an army that has lots of Graveguard and then some Blood Dragons. Actually, that's what I was going to do with Zacharias, so that feels like it could work. Uh, he gets Ogre Charge for Phantoms of the First Keep unit, so we could keep him with an elite sort of force of phantoms as well which i believe are a regiment of renown sort of unit that ah are available from here now Ooh, i can't wait to try these guys out but alas we're going to have yeah we can put them in zacharias's army together with mikhail and suddenly his army will be all the stronger and capable of uh, doing stuff all the way out here very nice Though, hmm, on the other hand, the Grave Guard would be better in Edmund's army. I don't know, I'll think about it. We gotta, we gotta figure a proper way uh, to uh, uh, distribute those uh, units and uh, the heroes and whatnot. Anyway, with that, we're out of time, and I'm gonna have to call the episode here. Next time, Abresh will quickly, uh, briefly go to activate another encounter. And I guess uh, if we don't have another quest or a library quest or whatever available to us next time, we'll do one of the difficult, uh, uh, we'll do one of the difficult battles: a Dark Land Orc Wanders, the Towers Master, the Corn Savages. One for every episode i think at the very least to start should be a pretty fun time and a good uh, way to go forward we'll also start getting units in anarch's army and we're probably going to transfer a bunch of bloodkin and other stuff to him so that he can get going as fast as he can and i definitely got to spend some of that valor so that the, by the time that we raise the abyssal revenant uh they can enter the fray with uh, the level 10 or 15 or whatever anyway more blood dragons to come so stay tuned don't forget to leave those likes and comments below especially to thresh all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching